I mean, you Muslims have a big problem. What is this? Your wife, she sleep around, and the one who owned the bed, you own the bed. And by the way, when we say own the bed, doesn't mean she have to sleep in a certain bed, no. So your wife, she can go to the hotel with the guy. He, he do boom, boom to her there. And you own the bed, bed mean the bed of the marriage, which means the wife belongs to this bed. So anything she produ produce during that marriage belongs to this, this bed, even though she did it in different bed. <laughs> And now with this, with this amazing scientific fact that a woman, she can have a baby unlimited years after you have sex with her, I mean, that's, that can solve a lot of problems in the world. Hmm? And you know, because Muslim women, mostly, especially the one who claim to be conservative, they wear uh, burqa, it's impossible to know that your wife is a cheating. I remember when I was in high school, one Muslim kid, and he, he, you know, he told us a story. One Muslim kid, he saw a girl. He walked behind her. He started flirting with her. Dirty words, etc. She's wearing burqa, the tent. She's walking in the same direction he's going home. He keep walking over behind her. Then she went in the same street where he lived. Then she went to the door of his house. He got worried. Oh man, she is going to tell him. She know my family, obviously, and she is going to tell my dad. It turned to be his sister. She did not say any word. He is walking behind her, saying all kind of filthy words to her. You have a nice ass. Can we go around? Say, say hello, say to me, to blah, 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 blah. He keep walking behind her, and then she go to his own house. At that moment, he, did not, he could not imagine that this is his sister. No. He thought that she knew his family, and this is why she is coming to his door, and now she will tell his family. That look what your son is doing. Look, he's behind me. When she arrived to the door, she turned and she, she left the, the cover from her face. It's her sister. He could not recognize if this is his sister or the... Uh, so the burqa is the best way for fornication. Because you can see your wife with a guy next to you, walking next to you. You will not know. That this is your wife. It's a perfect fornication tent. Even if you follow your wife coming from coming from your door, your house. Now you know her. You know she just left. After five minutes, she walked between a few women wearing burqa like her. You will not notice her. Which one? All of them look the same. This is why for an occasion Islam is so easy and it's impossible to prove. There's a picture of a man with four women wearing veil very funny I mean why are you even taking a picture if all of them they look like a black tent what is the wives in the pictures all right look like today we don't have customers guys if you are if you like what we do uh, uh, feel free to download my videos, share it with your friends. Uh, same time, uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you already subscribed, don't forget to unsubscribe because that will be a very good thing to do for to stop a global warming, according to Joe Biden. A global warming is a big problem. 
and one of the big problems we have in the earth causing big you know global warming is Islam and I can prove it according to Islam each time the Muslim they call Allah shaitan he does fart and as you know fart is nothing but methanol and it's flammable and dangerous so the global warming have to be stopped and the American people in America they decide to stop it they will go to the switch they will stop a global warming that's it don't worry the American they will stop it yeah. if it's hot in your country because of global warming if it's cold because of a global warming if the food is expensive because of a global warming if your wife is cheating because of a global warming if your son is crying all night because of a global warming if you cannot find a job because of a global warming if you are upset from me because of a global warming if you are unhappy in your life because of what global warming if your tooth is hurting and you cannot go to the doctor to fix them because they're expensive that because of a global warming so we have all of us to agree to come to a smart conclusion that everything happening in this earth is because of a global warming and all of us we have to stop it how stop smoking Muhammad I mean this guy Christian Prince he keeps smoking Muhammad every day every day and then you expect that the global warming will get better this is why Islam get protected by YouTube Facebook TikTok government why? Not because they are against freedom of speech. No, they want to stop global warming. You smoke Muhammad every day. You cause a lot of pollution. Can you imagine how much smoke comes from Muhammad every day? The guy is born four years after his father. A woman, she can give birth to a child 10 years after you divorce her. That is because of a global warming. You put the sperm inside her. Global warming is not giving the sperm enough time to be warm enough. So it takes a long time. Because of a global warming, the ice is melting in the North Pole. And that causes your wife's vagina to slow down in moving the sperm. So it takes 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. 20 years after, your wife, she called you, she said, this is your son. Why? Global warming. So those are scientific facts. And we have to agree that we should fight global warming. Other way to fight global warming, bring camel urine. Prophet Muhammad, he solved every problem in the world. If we stop drinking milk and we drink camel urine, what does that mean? We will not need cows. Democrats, they want to kill all the cows in the world. To do what? To stop a global warming. It turned to be that the cows keep farting and it turned to be that a cow is number, fart, number one fart animal in the world. Actually, there's proof of science that cows are coming from a land it's called Fartino, which is an Italian land. Prophet Muhammad, he solved the problem of global warming. However, shaitan is causing a problem because the Muslims say, Allahu Akbar, shaitan he fought. How many people here they believe in global warming? Anyone? Don't worry, don't worry. I'm not going to make fun of you. No, it's okay. Things happen. I saw the ice melting. You know what the funny is? They claim that global warming happened before many times. It looked like at that time, millions of years ago, there was cars. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's global warming. Anyway. Oh boy. What do you think about the accepting cars from Christians once every two weeks? Or once a month? Uh... Yeah, I can accept calls from Christians, but uh, what about the global warming? So what we will do now? 
I take call from you to make me forget about the global warming. We have a big problem. We need to solve the problem. We need to meet the whole world and stop cooking, smoking, driving. We have a problem. Switch the donkeys. And the funny is that those who speak against global warming, they are the ones who take a private jet. Do you see how much they fight the global warming? Joe Biden, you know, this guy is against the global warming. But when he go in the street, there's 1,000 cars before him and after him, and helicopter, and F-16, and F-35, and all the F in the world. But he is against the global warming. Like Obama wife, she go to do shopping. They close the mall. They close the street behind. They close the store. You know, it's like the Middle East. You know, like Middle East when Saddam Hussein want to go around, they close the whole town. They are against the global warming. Obama want to go to Hawaii. 20 airplanes go before, before him. 2,000, you know, like a special service they go to, to prepare for, but they are against the global warming. But your lamp in your bathroom, when you leave it, after you leave the bathroom, you are the problem. Anyway, we change the topic to global warming. What is next? Zucchini? Well, there's no Muhammad. What we can do? We are out of customers. Ah, uh, you remind me. When the Prophet, he says that a man, when he go to heaven, Allah will give him a wife, her ass is one mile. The first question come to my mind regarding global warming. If her ass is one mile, how big her fart? We have somebody saying, hold on, hold on. Christian Prince, stop running like a coward and debate me your Catholic nonsense so I can use you to prove prophecies of Ellen White and convert your follower to SDA uh, Sprint. I don't know what kind of a Sprint you are, but obviously I like Pepsi Cola. Get lost. I am a, I'm not a Catholic, you donkey. I'm not a Protestant too. You are a certified idiot. You are a Pepsi Cola. Too much gas. Go, go. Go. Next time, don't come here without your parents. What, Elon? What? Uh, I was afraid he would say to me he will convert me to Elon Musk. That's a new religion, baby. Idiot. What Catholic? What, you know? Somebody told you my name is Mr. Pope? Are you spying at me? You know that I'm the real Pope? What the idiot? Did you hack my computer and you find that I am a Pope? What the heck? Ah, you did not do it. It was a global warming. Okay, okay, I forgive you now. And you know, one of the things you see in the internet, you find all kinds of mental illness. There's people, they have really mental illness. You don't know you're talking to whom. You have to be careful. Take it easy. Don't be upset. Don't be upset. You have who? PP, have you seen Jonathan Kahan prophecy? If so, what is your opinion? I mean, my friend, I don't know. You, so you are a Christian, my friend? Do you believe really there's prophets these days? What prophecy? We, we have a prophets these days now. What he prophesy? That women, they will have their period next month? I did that before him. I can give you tons of prophecy. Here, let me give you one. Next year, we will have election. And either Biden or Trump will win. How about that? What prophecy, prophet? Everybody these days call himself prophet. Don't we have enough one donkey? His name is Muhammad. Are you people are so naive? Do we need anything beside the gospel? We have the gospel. We do not need any prophecy. We do not need any prophet. Prophecy. What did he prophesy? Can he prophesy what is the number of the lotto will win next week so I can buy it? 
Good talk, Tim. I want to change my car. You know, you see, you see in some countries, in every corner, fortune teller. Fortune teller and those false prophets is the same. They fool people, you know. If he can't tell you your fortune, what about he make fortune out of it? Go and buy the lotto. Go to the casino. You know what would happen next. In the best scenario, you can do even like buy stock market because you will know in a year from now what will happen. <laughs> People are so naive. What prophet? What prophecies? What are you talking about? All the prophets, all the prophets, they come to prepare for the Messiah. That's all. They prophesy for the Messiah. After that, there's no need for prophets. Don't believe any of those idiots. Let me ask you, do the prophet have a nice villa? And he traveled in first class airline? Did he ask people to donate for him so he can buy his own airplane? And maybe he's asking women to sleep with him too? I don't know. It's, you know, sometimes I feel like I want to quit my job and work as a prophet. Actually, I have my account. It's called Arabian Prophet before this guy. Ah. <laughs> oh, boy. Don't, don't let people fool you. What prophet? I'm wrong. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I will tell you something. People, is it true? That if a prophet he prophesy, that mean he receive scriptures from God. Tell me, please. Those who believe in those prophets, if a prophet he prophesy that he receive revelation, is that correct? Do we agree? Okay. If he receive revelation, that mean he's a prophet, and if he's a prophet, he receive revelation. But isn't it the Bible says anyone he bring other than this scripture, let him be cursed? Is that true? Anyone who bring other than this scripture, let him be cursed. So the Bible confirmed that there is no more scripture. That's it. So either you believe the Bible or you believe those liars. Those people, they take advantage of the naive one of us. Good-hearted people to steal your money, to take advantage of you. And now you fool yourself. You, and even if they say something, become true. Who told you that the devil cannot prophesy? I can say, I prophesy, but this is my prophecy. It doesn't make me profit. I can say, I prophesy that tomorrow I will be one day older. Okay, it's true. It makes sense. But it doesn't mean I am a prophet of God. Prophet of God is somebody receiving revelation. Nothing else, nothing less. From God, from the true God. I say that Turkey will have an earthquake. Doesn't make me prophesying. I saw a dream. That does not make you prophet, my friend. Prophet, prophet is not is not the, those things. Prophet is someone received from God revelation, scriptures, commands. The Lord He said something to you to tell the people. Don't fool yourself. So if I saw a dream that Turkey would have a big earthquake and that earthquake happened, that will not make me profit. It's a dream. 
Even if the Lord he saw it to me, doesn't make me a prophet. It's just a dream. So don't fool yourself. People, they claim such a title to take advantage of you. In fact, I believe if somebody is truly a prophet, he will not even say it. He will not go and say, I'm a prophet. You remind me of the 400 prophets of the king in the Old Testament. 400. Have you ever heard of a, of a of 400 prophet exist in one day, in one time? 400 false prophet. 400. It's a great business. Religion is a great business. If I make now people believe I'm prophet, how many people will be in my door to do anything I want? They are serving the prophet, brother. Anyone. I know, actually, you know what? Even if somebody claimed to be a prophet, is he like a person when I live in a tent? He don't want money. Or he is a person driving nice, fancy car, big houses. He don't accept to sleep in a normal hotel. He, he needs a limousine. Uh, I mean, we know what those prophets do. There's a prophet. I'll tell you what his name. I don't know. He called himself prophet. I think, yeah, he called himself prophet. Mr. Dollar. I mean, he, even his name is Dollar. He went to sleep. He came back. He told them that the Lord told him to buy his own private jet. Anyone knows what I'm talking about? What was his name? That's it. That's it. The Lord, he told him, I mean, it's not him. Not him. And the people are going crazy. Yeah, they want to donate for him. Like, yeah, you know, it's God. God told him. It's not him. The same as Muhammad. Muhammad told him the fifth of every attack to my pocket. God told him, the prophet told him anyway. Allah told him any woman she want to give herself to the prophet to if her. Yes, this is he's not after women. This is God told him, brother. God, God. Yeah. <laughs> private jet. The Lord he told you. Why you cannot do service God without private jet? What's wrong with the first class airplane, a first a first class <laughs> you know seat? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's obvious. God told him. Yeah, yeah, it's a true story. I mean, Jesus, he used to ride a donkey, and this guy he want to have a a private private jet for himself. Hmm. At that time, the private jet cost $65 million. And you know, $65 million just to buy the, pri the, 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 the plane. And then you need a lot of money every month to, to service the plane. You need a pilot, you need a, like a, a crew, you need maintenance, you need gas. It's not just buying the airplane. Yeah, brother, brother. You know. <laughs> this world is full of naive people. Oh, that mercy. Anyway, guys, because as you, as you know, I become a prophet like Muhammad, peace be upon him. And now I decide to buy a rose rice. So guys who like to buy rose rice for me. And uh, don't forget, I want uh, a rose rice. And I want rose uh, uh, land uh, and rose medium and rose law. Not only rose rice. Uh, and uh, I like, by the way, if you don't mind, I'm sure you don't mind because you're a prophet, you support the prophet. Uh, I want, uh, like in the back seat, uh, I want secretaries. Uh, two blonde secretary, two uh, uh, black secretary, and two Asian secretary, 
and two more so so like which mean mix okay no men secretary please only women and they have to be not good looking not good looking okay just like nice hair nice body uh, big eyes and lips have to be full of silicone like ducks like, you know and uh, don't forget the eyelashes they have to be long like in the wings because I'm prophet I fly and uh, yeah and the boobs the boobs is very important for our business as a prophet especially a Muslim prophet those boobs they have to be bouncing boing 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 why don't take me wrong if we fell down from the airplane they will fall down before me and they will bounce back and that will protect me from being killed and that will be Allah protecting me by those boobs uh, and yeah I just remember one thing uh, please don't hire any of those secretary have hair in her legs you know what happened to Prophet Solomon he went to Balqis Shaitan he made the women have legs Solomon he saw it oh that God what is this you know she looked like a monkey so don't do that warning no hair hairless so you check the resume a woman she say she have all those things and then she say checkpoint checkpoint she is hairless hairless down not hairless in the top in her head be careful I don't want a bald woman hello okay now uh, more requirement I I'm very humble I don't like to eat any expensive food caviar yeah why well, caviar and uh, you know uh, a lobster is maybe for the breakfast only because I'm really in diet I don't want to eat much and uh, uh, well, you know, you know. I mean, it's uh, any any food I eat. You know, uh, a steak is not really uh, important, but it's better to be well done. And uh, uh, you know, uh, well done, well eaten, well fried, uh, well cooked. You know, I mean, the whole world. You know, uh, this is why Muhammad he says, uh, "Don't say Sha Allah wa in shit. It's uh, Allah will, and you will say Allah will." Okay, this is why it's called well done. So now I think we understand each other and uh, by the way don't forget to pay for the gas for my car the rose rise and the rose lie uh, those rose high and rose low yeah yeah here we go we have a prophet what do you want more is it enough we have one donkey his name is Muhammad you still really fool there's really people they are still foolish until now they believe that there is somebody is a prof prophet what he will prophesy that Jesus is coming? What well, Jesus told us, and not only that, the Messiah told us what is make it clear that when he come is when people are not aware. So if somebody want to tell me tomorrow Jesus is coming, that means this is not tomorrow. Guys, did I make you hungry? So let me make it simple. If anyone in his country looking for a prophet part time, full time, I'm available. Okay? I like to serve you. Very simple, very simple. Yeah. Roast rice. Yeah, well, I mean, if you go to Asia, everything is made from rice. So I am assuming that roast rice is made from roast rice. <laughs> You go to Asia, guys, you go to the restaurant, you see a long line, huh? Long line of people. I was like, well, you know, I saw a long line. I said, this restaurant must be so, so crazy, so, so good, man. So I stood at the line. I hate to stood in the line, but there's no, I mean, I have no options. I'm hungry. So I stood, I asked the guy before me, he don't speak good English. I said, what is this restaurant? You know, he said, lice. I said, what? Lice. I said, okay, what beside rice? He said, <laughs> lice, rice. I said, okay, I got this one. What beside rice? He said, rice. <laughs> it turned to be the whole restaurant. There is nothing there except rice. And the rice have color. I, I, I was looking. It doesn't look rice. So they have rice juice. They have rice cake. They have rice cookies. They have rice alcohol. I mean, they make everything from, even the cars is made from rice. So uh, are you surprised that roast rice is made from rice? Hello? <laughs> rice cake? Rice cookies? Rice, sweet. Rice, uh, she, I mean, not, no. Anyway, I don't, I don't want uh, Asian people to be upset from me. You know, okay, I'm just, uh, you know, being a, a, a friendly prophet with you. <laughs>
Okay, uh, I, I, will, I will forgive your eyes. <laughs> Yeah, you go in the Middle East, everything with the bread. You know, in the Middle East, if we don't have a bread, we don't have food, actually. Seriously. If you put, like, whatever you put on the table, and you don't have bread with the food, you the table is missing. Even if you make a ta like a table of a king, you have to have a bread. Not, not lies. Oh, oh, here we go, lies. Okay. I think you have a delay in your. I think your internet running by rice internet. We spoke about this topic an hour ago, and now you are telling me what about the problem happened uh, because of the screen there. <clears throat> um. Any other comment? Any anything you want me to say? Beside the rice issue? Don't you think that the rice in Asia is causing global warming? So we should change the culture of the, the Asian people. And we forbid rice forever. No rice, no more. You know? Yeah, I think everything is a culture when it's come to food. And people, they, when they grow with some kind of food, they will find it hard uh, to stop eating it. You know, like, like me. If I, there's no bread, I find that there's no food. Even if they have the whole fridge is, is full. Okay. I ask what? About the lineage? What lineage? The lineage of the child, it's the one who owned the bed, as we showed you in the previous hadith. The one who owned the bread, he is, the lineage belonged to him. So if the child from fornication, if the wife she is cheating, still the one who owned the bed, the last name for the child will be uh, for that person, which means the husband. Lineage of Muhammad. Muhammad don't have any children. Muhammad don't have any children. All so-called children of Muhammad, like Fatima and the rest, they are the babies of Khadija. Khadija, she made Muhammad way older than him. She have two husbands before him, and Muhammad never have children. When they say to you that Muhammad, he have a children from his slave, Mary the Copt, well, she is a slave, she is sleeping around. Muhammad, he come once a while. Even Aisha, she told him, he don't look like you. He have nothing to do with you. Look at him. And Muhammad, he sent Abu Bakr, sorry, Umar, to kill her cousin because they heard rumors that he is sleeping with her. According to the story, the guy don't even have a penis. But obviously, someone else. Muhammad, he slept with hundreds of women. So it's not, it doesn't make sense that a man, he slept with hundreds of women, he don't have babies except Fatima. Obviously, he cannot have babies. Even the Quran confirmed that. Uh, like the Sheikh I showed you, the Shia Sheikh, those people they worship the lineage of Muhammad supposedly, but obviously those people they are just deceived. And they, they literally they worship them. They believe that they are light. They were in the forehead of Allah. They were lights in the in the forehead of Allah. They are not a human. The Shia they believe that Fatima and Ali and Muhammad and his family. The most important for them 
is the family of Fatima, Ali and Fatima and her children. Which obviously, she was killed by Umar. And she made, he made her lose her babies. And later they killed the, 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 the children too. Even Umar, he commanded to burn her house. Do we have any Muhammadan here? Do you have any plan to teach Arabic again, like a grammar and math? Well, uh, DK, if you want to learn Arabic, my friend, the videos I made is enough. Uh, you see, the, if you watch my videos, I made it very simple. Not like uh, teachers, they make it complicated. Uh, I, I, I taught it in a, in a, let us say, in a very easy manner. So if you learn the alphabet, you learn how to connect the alphabet, the letters together, then memorize words. And the grammar, the Arabic grammar is hard, you know, uh, if you want to be like a perfect in the grammar. Because, but I assure you, even those who have high degree in Arabic, they will make mistakes in the grammar. So don't, don't think about it much. Uh, the point is, if you can make it, make people understand you. So the grammar in Arabic can be very uh, uh, complicated or very simple. Do it in a simple way. Like as an example, in Arabic we don't say, like in English, we don't say uh, uh, beautiful house. We say house beautiful. It might sound awkward for you, but this is how it is. So the, the Arabic grammar can be simple if you simplize it. And you can make it so complicated, crazy, even you hate it if you decide to do so. So it, it can be very easy. Follow the video step by steps and it will be fine. And you know, I, I, my experience with teaching people Arabic, you say to them, how many people like to learn Arabic? A hundred people, they will say yes. You start the class, there's 20. Second class, there's 15. Third class, there's 10. Then after like 20 days, there's maybe four. Because they start noticing that this is need work. It's not that easy. It's not uh, like they say to you in YouTube, learn uh, Chinese in two days. Who believe in such a garbage? You know, learn Chinese in two, in two days. Who can do that? Uh... Somebody deleted this guy, uh, Android. Why, why you deleted the guy? He's asking me about seven days advantage. Well, seven days, obviously, they are cult. They are not Christians. Because simply, they, uh, they understood the Messiah wrong. I do not need to think about it. Anyone who go out of the Trinity and believe that the Messiah is the Son of God, he is no Christian. It's a cult. Uh, seven advantages in the beginning, I used to think about them differently. But then when I start reading about them, I notice that they are just a cult. They have a big problems. So they are not Christians. Period. Stay away from them. I do not really need to think about them. Because simply what they believe in, you can go right now to Google and say what uh, seven advances believe in. You will see right away, they are just a fraud, false teaching. Uh, if there is any website, app, that can uh, trust to translate Arabic language, uh, no website can translate really good. Like Google maybe is the best software. But Google Translate, as an example, if I take right now a verse from the Quran, does really uh, Google Translate? No, what, what the, what, especially for books like this, what Google do right away, let us say the, uh, the, I, uh, the, the AI, artificial intelligence, will search for the same sentence and give you the most popular translation for it, which is what you see here. 
Usually, it can work if you are using normal conversation. Let us say a statement which is not famous. It's not like coming from a book like the Bible or the Quran or so a normal book. That in the, maybe Google then will, will make a, a better translation. But mostly I notice that Google copy translation is exists already in Google, which means made by a human being. So if I copy now the sentence, you will see that Google is going to give you almost the same exact words uh, uh, if you copy it as it is. If you copy word by word, you will see the difference. Which means word by word, Google is translating. A sentence, mostly, is going to be a copy of a translation of already exists in Google, made by a human being. This is why when we use translation for pages, me, myself, I have to correct. Uh, Sometimes Google can't understand the word. You see, Arabic have many words. They are very similar, extremely similar. And they have two different meanings. Sometimes many different meanings. The lion have 300 names. One animal. One, just one animal. Not, we are not talking about the zoo or the jungle. One animal, Mr. Lion, have, if I type right now, the name of lions. Let me show you. More, more than 300, uh, you know, uh, name. I don't know them all, actually. I mean, it's endless. Uh. All right, look at this. This is just the names of the line. What happened to this page? Let us go here. I will use Google Translation to translate. All of those is the name of the line. Just one anyone. Are you having fun? We are not talking about the zoo. This is just one animal. Enough or more? Keep going. <laughs> just one animal. We did not even mention the tiger yet. <laughs> keep going. Yeah, keep going. We are going to finish soon, soon, soon. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah, we are getting close. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Soon, soon. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're getting closer. Here we go. So all of those are just the names of the line. So Arabic, you know, if, if we give the, one of those to, to Google, Google will be really screwed. You know, Google is very limited in translation uh, because simply this is a language have uh, a million words for the same thing. Uh, so. The name, the list of lion names in Arabic. You see it? Yeah. Who won the list? Anyone want the list? <laughs> <laughs> and that goes for tons of things too. <laughs> However, you don't need those. Nobody uses them anyway. I mean, who cares about those names? Those names usually, in the old days, what they do, uh, Instead of describing how the lion is, they give it a new name. So there's a lion have, let's say, long tail. There's a lion have a lot of hair around his neck. There's a lion have a big chest. There's a lion, there's, you know, every lion have different descriptions. So each name is describe something about the lion. 
to make it uh, unique. You know? So if you want to describe the bravery of the lion, have a name. If you want to describe the, the sound of the lion, or the, say the head of the lion, or the tail, it, it, every, everything of the lion have a name. Like as an example, you know, when the first time I did learn about uh, uh, the story of Eve and Adam, Muhammad claimed that when Eve, she want to deliver a child, each time she deliver a child, uh, her son die. Her son uh, died. So Shaitan, Satan, come to, to uh, Eve and he told her, if you call him Abdul Harith, he will live. So for me, I really, I, I was really too young. Abdul Harith, it's a name, we heard it a lot. Why if, we, why if she call him uh, such a name, the child will live? I could not really understand. But then I learned that Al-Harith is one of the name of the devil. And now that makes sense. So Shaitan, uh, let us see if we can find the story. Give me a second. Okay, let's see this one. I don't know why the text becomes so big. Let's make it simple. All right. So, you know, you know, every day you learn something new, especially when you are young. So I could not really understand what, why, why she is calling, why Shaitan asked her to call him Abdul Harith. What is that? Especially this name, we heard a lot. You, you will find this name is existing all over uh, Ara, you know, the Arab in the time of Muhammad. It turned to be that those people, they worship Shaitan too. Abdul Harith is a very well-known name, but I never came to my head that Al Harith, when they say that, it's meant the slave of Shaitan. Abd is a word meaning slave. Harith is the name of Shaitan. So Shaitan is telling her, if you call your sons the slave of me, they will live. And they did. Which means the first children of Eve, they were called not Cain and Abel, they were called Abdul Harith, the slaves of Shaitan. And one who said that is Muhammad himself. So language, the same as in English, actually, you know, English, every day you learn something new. Uh, but I think English is way easier uh, as, uh, as words, as size of how many, you know, words you need to learn. But Arabic, you know, you can learn what is enough for you to communicate. Like me, you know, my English is limited. But I have enough to express myself. And I'm happy with that. I do not need to be like... A, a professional in the language or to speak uh, I know every word I, you know as long as I can communicate and people understand me I'm happy with that and this is what your case if you want to learn Arabic focus in words you will use every day to talk to people to communicate depending what the topic you're talking about if you want to talk about mythology and religion then you know you have to have a really good uh, uh, language skills uh, but if you normal talk like how much this thing is easy where to go there yeah depends what you do all right guys i think we have enough for today i want to leave you in peace i hope you have a good time and i don't know if i'm going to keep this video we will see if i will keep it i will give you a chance to download it and watch it and if i don't find any benefit from it i might delete it uh,
Can you bring us lost sheep of Christ, please? Can you bring us? Bring you where? You go to Christ, my friend. I'm not the one who lost. You know, what do you mean lost? If you are lost and you know that you are lost, that means you know how to go back. You see, a person who knows that he is lost, that means he knew where is the way. A person who is do not know that he's lost, this is the one need rescue. He need help, you know, to tell him, hey, you are going wrong. But if you know you are lost, that you, you do not need anybody. Go to the, to, the right, to the right direction. You do not need me. Our awareness of being wrong is the first step to be right. It's not the end of the story. The first step to be right is to know that you're wrong. And then when you know you are wrong, you make a decision that I want to be right. I want to, I want to change my direction. So as long as you know that you are wrong, then you are doing the right thing. Move ahead. Go ahead. You do not need the poor me to guide you. You have the Christ, you have the Bible, you have the Gospel, you have the disciple. Who am I? I'm nobody. Nobody. We should not ask any man to guide us. The Lord, he, is, he, you know, he made it clear that the heaven and the earth will be destroyed and my words will not. So why we have his words? Is there someone wiser than the Lord, the Messiah, me? I cannot claim such an honor. So just, uh, you know, be, you know, face yourself when you are wrong and uh, change, change what is wrong in your life. And you know, sometimes, just the word change is hard. Like even change normal thing, like routine in your life. Uh, change the way you eat. Change the way uh, you sleep. Change the way... Change is, e is not easy. The word change is not easy. So if you have a bad habit in your life, regardless if it's a sin or not, to change that is not easy. It's going to take a lot of struggle because you're used to it. Like, you know, I was talking about that we Middle Eastern, we have to eat bread. And until now, if there's no bread, I, I'm not really enjoying my food, and I feel, I feel my, my stomach feels empty. So, this is just a bread, it's not sin, you know, I'm not talking about sin, it's just eating bread. So, change will take a lot of effort. A, a person who, who used to smoke, how you can change, you're used to it. It became part of your practice, even your hand moving, you know, you think you are smarter when you are, some people think they are more confident. In fact, smoking is a sign of the opposite. A person who is confident, he doesn't smoke. A person who is successful, he doesn't smoke. And I'm not talking about success of money, successful with intelligence. I mean, you know that your the smoke will destroy your heart, your your your, your kidney, your your, uh, your 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 chest. So why you smoke? That means you are not successful at all. You are a big failure. So to face addiction, need a lot of struggle. But you know that this is the way to go in the right direction, because addiction to something bad will destroy you. So either we, you know, we surrender to the to the addiction, and then we die miserably, regardless if it's about health or something else, or we are strong, and we be wise, and we change direction. How many of you uh, smoke here? Don't be don't be shy. Say, come on, come on, confess your sin. <laughs> How many of you smoke? If you smoke, don't don't say. If you smoke, I have really I ask you. You are not being a Christian. Why? 
because you are hurting the body which God gave you as a gift. You see, if I get sick, I get sick. I did not mean for it. I did not ask for it. I did not uh, seek it. I did not do it to myself. I get sick. Being sick is a natural thing. The body have a limit. All of us, one day we will die. But when you seek sickness, that means you are committing suicide. When you smoke cigarette, it means you are planning slowly to kill yourself. When you take a drug, it's the same. So, are you Christian or you are Antichrist? Are you Christian who appreciate what God gave you, the gift He gave you, or you want to hurt yourself, which means you hurt the gift God gave you? So, if you smoke, you better make decision right now, not tomorrow. Don't say tomorrow I will stop. Oh, next week. That means it will never happen. That will make you Abdul, inshallah. So if you smoke, never, never do it again. Throw it right away in the garbage. Resist it. Uh, and you know, there's many things in life. You quit smoking five years ago, good for you. I never have a cigarette all my life. Never, never, never. You know, when I was a kid in the Middle East, like, you know, to be a man, you know, take a cigarette, what's wrong with you? Are you afraid of your dad? They tried everything, the teenage kids with me. I refused to have a cigarette. I'm smarter than this. I know. Already we knew that cigarette will destroy, uh, you know, uh, your health. I remember I have, uh, there's a kid in my age, when I was a teenage, his father to go to the second floor, it take him at least, I don't know, 40 minutes. He, the guy, he hardly, he can step one step, he have to sit down. When he breathes, it's like a chimney, oh, you know, like it's an engine, a car engine, like something, everything wrong with this guy. This guy, he smoke a cigarette, he, he don't even light a cigarette with the, with the lighter. He light a cigarette from the cigarette. He's not even 50 years old. He cannot even climb to his house second floor. If you look at those people who take drugs, you will see a woman, she is in the age of 25, she, looked, she, is, she is 70. Something is sad, me. Can you answer my question? What is sad in you, my friend? What is sad in you? What was the question for Islam education? I don't see that question. Type your question, please, so I can see it. My father died because of heavy smoking. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, people do not know the consequence of what they do until they get a little bit older, and then you will notice, you can't even move, you can't even talk. I climb 50, 60 steps, very hard steps. It doesn't even take me, I don't know, a, a two minutes. I don't even have heavy breathing. But if I smoke, You can imagine how hard for me to take those steps. So where is the question for this uh, Islamic education? I have some doubt about the Bible that embed me from converting. Can you help me to solve this? Uh, you know, if you have a doubt about the Bible, Uh, that's good. 
because simply uh, you should not accept things blindly but at the same time uh, when you ask somebody to help you then I will ask myself I mean this guy he is living in the year 2023 he have computer he have internet which me when I was in the Middle East I never have an opportunity to have you can type what this verse mean and you will have the answer from a Christian's website in a professional way in details so why why you are coming to me says I need your help I have a doubt it doesn't make sense to me like if I'm the only one who can give you the answer I will say okay well I mean what the guy what he can do there's only one Christian guy his name is a Christian prince he is the one who can help me but we have millions of articles and studies about the Bible this is the book the most book studied in the world so why you have a doubt it sounds like you have a doubt because you decide to have a doubt or maybe you are just making a statement okay give me the answer you cannot find about what give me the question give me the answer or maybe next time we we'll go live let us see what your uh, or you can go to any other Christian channels they can help you too but to make it simple you know when you say you have a doubt about the Bible no answer can clear your doubt because either you believe that this is a book coming from God or you don't so my answer will not make any difference you know if, if somebody said when I went to Jerusalem you asked this question before when I went to Jerusalem and why I spoke about Islam and the kingdom of Jerusalem the Orthodox attacked me why do the Orthodox support Islam in our Palestine I don't know what happened to you but I don't believe this is true all the ones I know they are Orthodox and they spit at Muhammad I have no idea what are you talking about in fact my family they are very deep in history of the orthodox church and we have many bishops from my family and every single one of them spit at muhammad i have no idea what are you talking about I don't know, maybe you are making up story in Islam education because I never heard of an Orthodox who say that. Never, never. What you are saying doesn't make sense. I have an addiction watching Christian Prince. But this is a good addiction. Well, anything is addiction is not good. The only maybe the only addiction it can be good is to learn you know if you this is what you meant that's good but uh, addiction the word addiction usually is is a is a you know a negative word not positive uh, because simply you are, you are losing control right you know you don't have uh, control of yourself uh, but in the case of uh, being productive being useful, being, being helpful. So let us say you have addiction to being a, a useful person in community or to your family. You have addiction to work more so you can provide your children more. That's good. This addiction can lead you to be lazy, couch potato. An addiction to make you a productive person who cares about his family and he do his best. I posted the question I had to keep short because how low space 
Okay, Link, I just see your question. What is your question? I saw the Bible refer to uh, Philistines and Chaldean living during Abraham time. You came century after, actually. Yeah. Well, you know, when you when you say I saw it says about Abraham, etc. I mean, obviously, you are very. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to call you ignorant. Maybe you do not know that Abraham himself is from that land, and he is one of them. So how they are they exist? How they are they exist? So when we talk about people. We talk about the stages, like there is a state when uh, uh, those people they became, uh, let us say, an empire, and when they became so powerful. But it doesn't mean that people never exist. What do you think? People they came from the middle of nowhere, suddenly there is a kingdom. Like one day there was zero people, and then they became a million. Is that what do you think? What do you think in the time of Abraham? Like Abraham is born from who? Maybe he's born from Baal. It was a drop of water. One drop came in the ground, and the drop became a river. So when you say Abraham is born in Iraq, well, that means Iraq. In Iraq, there is people, and who are those people? Then you go check out. So don't tell me that exists. That is because of your ignorance. You know, when we say the children of, uh, of, uh, of Noah, hmm? but each one of them, he became, a, you know, his people became kingdom or kingdoms. But does that mean those people, they suddenly became a kingdom or there was people who became a tribe and the tribe grew and became big community and then they have cities and then they selected a king. Nothing is coming from nothing. You know, if you want me to give you an answer about anything, give me the give me the, the scriptures you are talking about, so we can discuss about it, and maybe now or next time. Uh, there is many names of people in the previous uh, in the history. Uh, as an example, uh, today. If you talk about the people of Iraq, what do you say? What is the name of Iraq? They call it the, the Arab Republic of Iraq. But you might say to me, okay, there is no Arab and there is no Republic in Iraq. This was Assyria, this was Chaldean, this was etc. You know? But it doesn't mean that in the time, even in that time, there is no Arab located there. Bedouin, they go around. All those people mostly, they used to be Bedouin, move from place to place. People live in their tents. So when we name people, we are not talking about a stationary place. There's people who they are very ancient in time, and they have already cities and towns like the Persians and even the Ashurian. And there's people who came after, but they are exist. They did not establish a kingdom yet, but they are there and they are exist. They are not well known yet because they don't have a king, they don't have a kingdom. But doesn't mean they are not there. If now we talk about uh, the word uh, Palestinian, there is no Palestinian. What Palestinian? If you go in history back, you see the word Palestine have nothing to do with something called Palestinian. Nothing to do with it. Even names you have to do in English have nothing to do with the origin names. Like if you ask an Egyptian, what is the name of Egypt? He will give you a different name. You know, he, he, never, he never heard of the word Egypt before. The Egyptian guy himself, he never heard of the word Egypt in English. What Egypt? Where, where, where you got this word from? So, Egyptian himself, he never heard of the word. But you, you call them Egyptian. If you go to ask anyone, he will ask you, he will say to you, this is Masr. Masr. What the name? Masr. Okay, what is your citizenship? Masri. What you call them? Egyptian. 
Or simply, names are not always the same. The same nation, the same people, they have different names. They are called different words, different names. They evolve through history. They evolve in number, they evolve in names, they evolve in language. They merge with other language, they merge with other nations. Uh, what his name, this guy? You no, know, don't go. You did not even give me the scriptures. Give me the scriptures and tell me about what is exists, what exists. You don't come here and you say, you throw things. Give me the scriptures. Even if you want to go, I can I, I talk about it next time I go live. When you want to say something, you want to have a question, give the question. Say in this chapter says this, and tell me why you are thinking this way. I remember once a person asked me how the Bible speak about the heaven of Eden when Eden is a city was exist long, long after. So the potato he think that Eden in Yemen is the heaven, is the garden of Adam and Eve. That city was called named after the garden of Eve of Eden. So now if we have a city in, uh, in, in USA, it's called Lebanon. Lebanon. They have a city, it's called Mecca in USA. In USA, they have names for all cities in the world. Crazy American. They, name, they give names to everybody. They have Jerusalem. They have Cairo. They have any name you want. Just search USA address. Search, you will find the city of any name you want to in, in USA. It doesn't mean that Lebanon in USA. The internet now, people do not even know the difference between Assyrian and Syrian. You say Assyrian, they say to you Assyrian. You say Assyrian, they say, are you Assyrian? We say Aramaic, they think that's all of them, they are one nation. Anyway. All right, guys, I think we have enough for today. And until we see you soon again, I'm supposedly not, I'm not going to stay late. Let's see how many hours I stayed. Uh, not much. Few hours, few hours. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. I don't know, G-Link, I think you are just making a comedy because I noticed you post the same thing and still you don't want to give me what is the, what is the, even the, the uh, 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 what is the question? Where you get this from? You keep saying to me, each time you go, I'll go online, I know, I saw the question before. And obviously you are just ignoring that, you know, so I, I think you are playing games. This is why I, I lost my respect to you. You see, I asked you to give me the scriptures Give me the verses. You keep repeating the same stupid thing. Be mature. Be adult. If you say to somebody, somebody, here it says this, here, here. You don't say, I heard this. Then we can go read and check what you are talking about so we can understand even what your question is about. If I give you the, why, what if, is it hard to give the scriptures? Get out of here. When honesty is missing, that's mean you are just being a devilish person. You are just not, you're not honest in the question. You are making a claim, but you cannot even tell us what are you talking about. So we say to you, what scriptures you are talking about, you don't want to give it to me.
Maybe you are right. Maybe there's a mistake there. Go ahead. But you have to give us the, the you know, the, the, the scriptures. So either we laugh at you, or you laugh at me. Same time, do you think really that those who they are studying the Bible for the last thousand of years, they did not notice that those are wrong? You are the smart ass who saw it? So we saw that this is wrong and we still believers? Everything written in the Bible have a reason. So before you open your mouth, you will find the reason for it. You said the answer did not satisfy you. Who care? Don't satisfy it. Don't believe. In the top of that, let us say for the sake of argument, that point is uh, there is a confusion about it but i believe that over uh, always the one who wrote the uh, the story or wrote uh, the, the details of history he is more close to history than us so are you saying to me that you are the one who lived thousands of years after abraham knows more what was there with abraham from those who they are close to him close to his time so the more we go far, the more we know. You remind me of the Big Bang Theory. We are far. Same time we are in. Okay, what far? What in? We are in a theory. It's called the Big Bang. And what the theory is saying that this earth was part of big explosion. We are, which means we are in the Big Bang. But nobody can be inside it. They can They have no problem now. After all those years teaching Big Bang in schools by scientists, they found that the Big Bang is collapsing. Since I was a kid, they teach us in school Big Bang, Big Bang, Big Bang. All those years it turned to be shish kebab hummus. The temple, which was the temple of the, according to the scientists, the temple of the sun. The temple of Mecca, Al Mecca, in Yemen. Just a few years ago, they discovered that they were stupid. This is not the sun temple. This is the moon temple. So, from the moon, from the from the sun temple to the moon temple, uh, finally they were able to to able to read the the uh, the letters was you know in, in the walls. So don't fool yourself. You put your trust on someone who he claimed to be a scientist. He might be a scientist, he might be a professional, but it's true too that we can make mistakes as a human. We can come to a conclusion based on what we know. But maybe what we do not know is way more powerful than what we know and might take us to the opposite. And this is what all history is about. The, in the beginning, scientists, scientists themselves, they believe the earth is a flat. Scientists, not the ignorant. Then the same scientists, they change their mind. It's not a flat. The theory of a gravity, if, if something, something small fell down, the massive volume of the ground or the earth is going to, gra you know, to grab it by gravity. But there is an exception. Every theory is an exception. So now, okay, it turned to be not true always. If something have a very, very, very small, tiny weight, it can be out of the gravity, which means it can be free from it. Which is very weird. Because I am very small too, compared to the size of the Earth. So if there is something extremely small, it still can be free from the gravity of this massive Earth or even the massive sun.
So scientists, they discover every day something new. It can erase what they believe yesterday, or it can confirm it. And then it might happen that after 50 years of confirming, after confirm, after confirm, one thing appear. We'll flip the table and all the confirmed previously will be not confirmed no more. There is a, there is a, a space scientist, I don't know if you know his name. He, he looked like a Japanese guy. I, I forgot his name. This guy, he wrote many books about the Big Bang. He believed in the Big Bang. And, you know, in, in the last interview he did, he said now he's thinking to rewrite his books. The most famous scientists on space, galaxies, Big Bang. Now he decided as she should rewrite his book. Why? Because the telescope they send in, in the sky is giving them different uh, information. What is different information? This is why the Big Bang Theory is collapsing. So now, just a little telescope, we send it. Now we are changing our our direction of thinking about what and what happened and how it happened. Even the, the age they give to you about the age of the, the, this universe, it's false. How, how anyone can know? How anyone can know when this universe started? What if we are a galaxy born of different galaxy? And what if that galaxy is born of other galaxy? And that galaxy, we don't even know about it. So, most of your science is a fiction. In fact, science is fiction. And then the fiction, human beings work for it to make it reality. Like, it was a fiction to make a flying car, now we have it. It was a fiction to fly, now we have it. It was a fiction to go to the space, now we have it. Fiction, science fiction. You can make fiction become science and reality by working for that direction, but doesn't mean that science is the one can tell you everything when in fact most of science can be fiction, especially if it's a theory. And most of what you have is a theory. Like until now, they could not find one document about Muhammad. But as you see, Muhammad uh, is a very famous figure. There is nothing about Muhammad. Nobody wrote about Muhammad. There is no coins of Muhammad in the time of Muhammad. There is no historian wrote about Muhammad in the time of Muhammad. Does that mean Muhammad doesn't exist? You tell me. Yeah, the age of the earth, the universe is a changing. But, you know, ask yourself, how you can know the, the age of the universe if you do not know even what is the universe? Do we know what is the universe? That's funny. Like, you give an age of a person, but you do not know the person? I find their science is kind of stupid. Anyway. Yeah, I said the goodbye twice because the topic is keep coming. So I want to say thank you guys, and until we see you soon again. I don't know, maybe maybe I will not keep this video. No Muslim called us, and nothing exciting too much. So um, we will see if I will keep it. And until I see you soon again, I say may the Lord bless you and keep you safe. And we pray that we will be always guided, and the truth will set us free. And those who, you know, they try to bring a confusion to your life. Confusion will not be allowed to go into your heart. Uh, me, myself, I'm not against science, but science is not my guideline. Science doesn't believe, don't believe in love, but love is true. Science does not believe, you know, of something called loyalty. Doesn't. Science believe in numbers and uh, blood moving and heart beating, but doesn't believe in love and heart. Science can't explain why a mother she take care of her baby, and she cry if he cry. Cannot. Science can explain how she have a baby. 
Science cannot tell you why you feel something before it happens sometime. Nobody can explain that. Science can, cannot explain a lot of things, simple things for you as a human being. Science is a very limited option in the human life. People keep still dying, people still have cancer, people still have disease. Science is still unable, in this ability in fact, little tiny virus make the whole world collapse. All their science became shish kebab. They locked hundreds of millions inside their doors. Panicked. People, what happened to the computers, hospitals, etc.? It turned to be little tiny virus make you, sh make you have a diarrhea. This is your science. So I, you know, I don't deny science can help by learning about our body, learning what can fight diseases, but obviously, Still, we have zero science compared to what can happen. Let us see in the coming pandemic what will happen with Mr. Science and the scientists. What I saw, that science became an opportunity to make money, not to defend a human being. Trillions of dollars been taken from the pocket of poor people because of a virus. It scared the hell of them. And now what happened? There's no virus no more? People are not dying no more? What happened? Did we re did, did, did Corona say bye bye? Like what? It disappear? Oh, everybody okay, took a vaccine. Those who took a vaccine is not even maybe one percent of the population of the world. They fool people, and not only that. If you say something you don't like, they will, they will, they will, uh, you know, they will shut your mouth. You cannot say that. So they force the virus on you. They force. The forest propaganda on you. I'm not saying the virus is not there, but they scare the hell of people for the reason. Always there is viruses, always there is diseases, always there is people dying from sickness. Always. Nothing changed. But they want to scare the hell of you. All right, take care, guys. God bless you, and see you soon again. I hope tomorrow, if I can. Take care. Bye bye.